Hey guys, and welcome to yet another episode on the channel. Uh, today, we are going to be doing a uh, very cool unboxing and a little bit of a review of the Tudor Black Base Steel, and um, it is going to be reference number, let me just pull it up for a second here, the M7, yeah, let me get the zoom in here, M79730-000, it's the uh, Tudor Black Base, uh, Black Base Steel, the uh, 41 millimeter, course in uh, steel. So without further ado, let's get the uh, iPad off for a second. We'll go back to that in a minute. And uh, let's get to the uh, watch itself. Um, so as you guys can see, this is the outer box and uh, comes labeled to uh, the Black Bay, the serial number and uh, model number as well. And uh, so the outer box always comes off first and it reveals the... Uh, uh, well, that's really the shell of the outer box, excuse me. This is more of the uh, outer box. And as you guys can see, it's got a uh, nice Tudor logo, which is um, embossed. I know you guys can't obviously feel it, but I can. Uh, it's embossed, uh, which is pretty nice. And, uh, you know, typical kind of box. Nothing, nothing too special. Just like cardboard or whatever. And uh, I'm going to get that further open. Of course, this was... Uh, gotten from uh, Watch Max, so you have uh, warranty and care information and a uh, whole bunch of other things. Watch with a screw down crown, which currently, uh, you know, this does have. And uh, gives you the water resistance guide, of course, as well. Uh, this one, water resistant to uh, 200 meters. So they do say that uh, it allows for impact water sports such as board diving and scuba diving. So 200 meters, you guys could do pretty much whatever you would want uh, with with the watch around water. Uh, which brings us to um, opening up the uh, outer box and um, kind of like a nice uh, kind of material here, like a nice, um, very thin kind of foam, which is kind of cool, which encases the uh, inner box here, which you guys can see is the uh, Tudor logo. Well, that's kind of cool. You know, it's just a nice kind of like little touch for watch that um this one uh i ended up getting uh for um it was right around the 2900 dollars mark so around give or take about a thousand dollars off the retail which is you know pretty significant of course um it's kind of cool um so you know of course the uh little piece of uh like a styrofoamy kind of thing like very thin just you know cases the whole thing so we're going to put that, of course, off to the side as well. And uh, this is the uh, inner box, of course. And uh, when you open it, you arrive at the uh, watch itself. Um, you know, you have the nice uh, Tudor logo uh, right there in the center of the box. And uh, you also have the guarantee booklet, as well as little information on divers' watches, which, you know, most uh, watches come with, which is very cool. And then uh, inside... You know, of course, uh, always uh, it's always nice to have like a nice little uh, leather, uh, not or not not leather, um, but like a suede, you know, kind of presentation pillow. It always adds a little bit of extra, you know, class to it. And of course, you know, you have the black and the red, which are you know two large colors, as you can see on the uh, logo right up there. And uh, the other thing that this has is, like, in case I guess you wanted to... I'm going to put the watch down for a second. Let's just say you wanted to, um, you know, have, like, another strap. I mean, this one doesn't, doesn't didn't come with another strap. But if you want to put another strap in there, that's a great thing. Or if you, you know, took some links out and you wanted to put that in there, too, you could always put that in here with the watch itself. But just kind of like a nice little touch, which I think is cool, not... Not every watch box does things like that. So, you know, like a nice suede all throughout, which is really cool. You know, just some nice, I would say to the box, some very, very nice touches. Not that, you know, we're doing a review on the box, but, you know, again, it's just something to, to kind of keep in mind. So, I'm going to get that box closed here, of course. And uh, I'm going to uh, just temporarily put um, 
that box back in here and I'm going to leave of course just for now this up and we'll set the watch very nicely uh, right on top of here for a minute so anyways guys uh, this is the uh, this is the tutor of course I'm going to do a nice little uh, zoom in there so you guys can really see um, maybe a little hard to see but it is 200 meters uh, just bring this uh, here which is technically the um, uh, what is it 660 feet of uh, water uh, resistance there which is nice kind of cool to see that there and uh, it's actually got you know a nice uh, just a black as you guys can see very easy to read bezel it is a chronometer watch which means it is uh, minus four to plus six performance on a daily basis we're going to get to that in a minute um, it is officially certified of course um, and you know again it's 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 a very you know, it's a very, very nice piece. Uh, I just want to go over some of the details of the watch. I'm going to go back to putting it uh, down for a second so you guys can uh, get a better idea of some of the specs here. Um, so again, uh, it does have the, um, let me just zoom back out here a little bit. Um, retail price on it is $3,900. So like I said, got it for about $2,900. Uh, manufacturer caliber inside. Um, of the watch itself, which is right in the, you know, of course, in the in the case back. Although this has a uh, yeah, screw back case back, kind of like the uh, sister brand, cousin brand Rolex. Um, the MT five six one two, which again is COSE certified, which you guys um, saw on the um, on the uh, on the dial uh, right over down. Here, chronometer, officially certified. And um, this one does have a 41 millimeter steel case with a steel bracelet. And also, the um, the bezel on it as well is steel. So, you know, kind of kind of interesting. Normally you see like an aluminum bezel or ceramic, but with this one you do see steel all the way around. Um, so, uh, so this was from, uh, 2017. Um, and of course, you know, it's a diver's watch. Um, you know, it's again, you know, the, the movement's pretty, uh, pretty cool with it. Um, and of course it features the date. I do want to just highlight that. I'm sure you guys saw it already, but that's at the three o'clock position right over here. It's actually, again, very, very, very easy to read. Very big. Uh, really, no problems, which is great. It's something that I happen to love. Um, and, of course, just like a little video. Let me see. Just kind of cool that Tudor uh, has this on their website. Of course, the ball just representing solid steel there. You guys can see the... Um, crown there that is you know signed which is cool it's always a nice touch whenever you have that now i mean not all brands have that um so of course here are some just kind of like features of the uh of the uh watch itself you know with the tire case there on the side which you know i can obviously show you guys right here the one in the uh, on the website was shown on a, uh, I guess more of like a leather kind of band. This one is on the steel, of course, mine. Um, and you guys can say, you know, again, the 200 meters, 660 feet, which is chronometer officially certified, minus four to plus six every day. Of course, you guys see the, uh, you know, pretty, pretty elegant, uh, what Tudor is known for, the snowflake uh, hands, which you guys can see right there. They light up very nicely with loom. I will, of course, show that to you guys uh, in a few minutes. Um, here with the crown. Um, and it is satin brushed steel. This is um, the Tudor Caliber uh, movement. Um, so you guys can see it's uh, you know somewhat of a um, free-sprung uh, balance uh, wheel right there on the bridge. Um, and you know, th this is somewhat of a, you know, of a monster movement. It's supposed to be very, very accurate. We're going to test that in a few minutes. Um, 
but uh, it's the MT5612 manufacturer movement, which means it's in-house with the date function. And uh, I guess it was uh, presented apparently in uh, 20, whoops, 2015. Uh, so you guys can see that there, which is kind of cool. And, um, you know, it's, it's just, you know, very, very high precision movement. Um, and, uh, you know, that's the, um, that's the rotor, of course, which is used to wind the movement. And, um, you know, there's a few different, you know, straps. Of course, I have the, uh, steel on mine, but then you have the, uh, it looks like leather and then like a NATO kind of, uh, bracelet on that. So anyways, uh, let's get to the, um, let's get to some of the details here. Uh, these are going to be important in, in a few minutes, uh, and I'm going to explain to you guys why. Um, but it does have a five-year guarantee on the movement, which is great. A lot of the um, Swiss manufacturers are moving to the uh, five-year guarantee, if not more. And that was started by, I believe, Omega, I think. Um, anyways, it is a 41 millimeter um, steel case with polished and satin finish. And actually, I do just want to show you guys this. The um, you guys can see it's kind of like a little bit of polish here. Um, but then you also have the brush on the bracelet, um, which is really cool. So, you know, it's a little bit of like, you know, both, but you know, it's still, you know, it's still nice enough where you could wear this for like a dress or dress your occasion if you want, but still tough enough where you can certainly wear it to the beach or for diving or for, you know, sporting kind of occasion. Uh, the movement again, like I mentioned, uh, the manufacturer caliber MT5612, COSC certified. It is a self-winding mechanical movement with bi-directional rotor system, which means that when the movement, um, when the rotor goes either left, right, up and down, side to side, it's winding it in both directions, not just one. So that's very cool. And of course, the uh, one of the best parts about this watch, I guess, is the power reserve of approximately 70 hours. Um, crown itself is screwed down. Uh, I'm going to show you guys all this in a few minutes. Uh, with the Tudor, Tudor Rose engraved uh, and black lacquered with black anodized aluminum winding crown tube. Uh, and I'll show you guys the tube as well. And then uh, the bracelet is steel with folding clasp and safety catch. Um, the bracelet, I believe, is around a 22 millimeter lug width. I'm going to um, pull out one of my... Um, I'm going to pull out the... Uh, uh, like trying to think of the name now, um, the uh, mesh bracelet, of course, I couldn't even think about that. I'm going to pull out the mesh bra bracelet and I'm going to show you guys, um, how, uh, the lug width on this one compared to that. And this is 20 millimeter. Um, it's got the dome sapphire crystal. I do just want to, um, show you guys kind of that. See how that's slightly raised above the, uh, of the, uh, you know, dial the watch and everything. So it comes up a little bit. Not too much. And uh, the dial is black and domed. And the bezel is unidirectional rotating bezel in steel with 60-minute graduated steel disc. So 60-minute, not 120 click. I'm going to get to that in a minute as well. With black engraved markings. And again, the watch is waterproof to 200 meters, which is 660 feet. And that's pretty much uh, that for the um, for the specs, for the most part. So we're going to get that turned back off. And I'm going to come back to the watch now for a few minutes here. So, again, um, let's get to the, um, sorry, let's get to the crown here first. Uh, you guys can see I'm screwing it out. And pops out, no problem. Simple click, push it back in. You guys can see here, this is the um, the black part here. That's the tube for a little extra waterproofness and safety. And then when you really press it back into the case all the way, and then you start to turn, it will then screw into the crown and create that kind of like more of a watertight, not as much airtight, because most things it's very hard to make them airtight, but at least pretty watertight uh, to the case. And then, uh, you know, of course, when you uh, take it back out again, do that for you here. Take it out to the second position, and you guys notice that the second hand stops. Of course, it hacks. Then you start to rotate it around. And uh, let's see if this is at midnight. 
be able to see if it's at midnight if the 25 changes to 26. So that was actually at noon. So we're just going to keep going around for a second. I'm going to see how instantaneous the date does jump. I'm kind of curious to know myself. So 11.45, 50, 55, and pretty uh, pretty on point with midnight there. That's pretty much an instantaneous date jump. So that's it's actually really nice. Then, of course, when you get uh, bring it around to 6.30 to change the date in the morning, press the crown in all the way, take it back out to the first position, the second hand continues to move, and the date just jumps seamlessly, which is great. So that's very, uh, it's very nice, very cool. Put that back in all the way. I'm going to just screw that back into the case. Um, so now the other thing... Um, it's kind of interesting, uh, is the 60, uh, 60 minute, uh, uh, bezel. So as you guys can see, it would normally have like a, um, like a, just like a half, uh, half second, uh, turn, but these are, these are full second turns. Um, I would say the bezel action is pretty, it's pretty smooth. Um, really not a lot to grip. It's just kind of like flat. Um, you know, kind of against the, um, against the case here, but, um, you know, it's still pretty easy to turn. I mean, you know, I'm kind of sitting behind the camera and then the, uh, watch is in front of it. Um, so really not too bad. And as you guys could hear, it's very smooth with the uh, click. So, you know, it's really turning and really not a lot of play at all with it, which is pretty good. Um, you know, the first 15 minutes are graduated with the minutes and then everything else after that is just marked at the 20, 30, 40, 50. And then at the 12 o'clock, you have the, uh, light up, um, little loom marker there, which is kind of cool. Um, so, you know, just taking a little, um, tour around the watch here, you guys can see the, uh, bracelet, which, you know, it's the watch itself is pretty substantial with the weight. Um, you know, if you put this on your wrist, uh, which I'll, sh I'll show you guys a wrist shot in a minute, um, you know, it, it is very, very substantial, which is, uh, which is nice. Um, you know, it's not too loose, not too, uh, heavy, uh, you know, not, I should, shouldn't say too loose, not too light. Um, I guess one of my only kind of complaints about this watch, which is just a little weird is is that there's really no half links um in this although they are uh they are screw links as you guys can see kind of like right there that's a screw so the screws come out um uh, but really no half links and with this one there's not like a dive clasp extension which kind of sucks uh you only have the three micro adjustments here on the watch itself um and uh let's see here on the uh you know it's only uh, signed a little bit here on the uh, the clasp folding down. You guys could see Tudor there, um, but it does, you know, fold down. And then this goes on top of it. It's kind of hard now with this little thing on the way. Um, let's see if I can get it on there. Although I don't think I'm going to be able to. Maybe I will. So it sits, you know, very flush, and it's you know very secure, which is which is nice. Um, then this just got to get that up. There we go. Um, you know, so it's pr a pretty long clasp and it's, you know, nice polishing there, which is pretty cool. But, you know, really the lack of uh, half links there um, and really no dive clasp extension. Just, you know, kind of really don't put it in, in, in a class of, you know, maybe elite divers or whatever it is. But it would be nice to have half links and a little bit more of a micro adjust there for, um, you know, for wrists that are just a little bit more odd shaped. Um, but anyway, so that's, um, that's pretty much, uh, you know, the, the watch, uh, for the most part, um, let's put it on the time grapher to kind of see how it does. And let's also show you guys a loom shot. So I'm going to pause the video for a second. Well, anyways, we're back and of course in complete darkness, but that's going to change. Let's, uh, let's get this watch lit up a little bit here. Uh, we'll really get the uh, loom going on this for a second so you guys can really see um, just kind of like how good and how kind of cool it is. This is a uh, infrared light, of course. Uh, I'll just keep it shined on it for just a few more seconds this so you guys can really see, get a good idea. I'll kind of show you guys it on the wrist as well. Um, 
So anyways, that is the, uh, that's the loom on that bad boy. And as you guys can see, um, pretty, pretty significant. I mean, that's nothing to really, uh, scoff at. Um, you know, you got loom, uh, which, you know, is pretty much, it's kind of cool because it's reflecting to like, um, all the, uh, arrow markers here on like the outside of the crystal, even though there's really nothing, uh, on those. It's just kind of like the reflection of the, uh, of the arrow markers here, um, which is kind of cool, but again, very significant. So, uh, I'm going to pause this video now and I'll kind of show you guys it on the wrist. All right. So as you guys can see, this is the, uh, this is the watch on the wrist. Um, you know, pretty, pretty, you know, pretty nice, uh, wrist presence, uh, you know, again, for it being 41 millimeters, uh, my wrist size is approximately seven and a quarter, maybe a little over that depends on the time of day. Sometimes it shrinks up a little bit more. Sometimes, uh, it swells up a little bit more, but you know, very, very, just kind of nice on the wrist. I don't have it clasped now. Cause again, with that thing on the, uh, attached to the clasp, I can't, uh, really fully get it on, but you know, uh, nice wrist presence, um, feels very comfortable, significant weight to it. Like I said, I don't know the exact weight in grams. I can't tell you that. Um, but that's just an idea of how it, uh, how it looks on my about seven and a quarter inch wrist. So let's go uh, downstairs to the time grapher and see what the timing is. Figured why not get another loom shot for a second for you guys on that. All right, you guys, so now we're at the uh, time grapher machine. I'm just gonna get this plugged in very, very quickly. Uh, this is something I got a little while ago and I think it's so cool. Um, this is something a lot of professional watchmakers use. It's the, uh, Weishi number 1900 multifunction time grapher. And, uh, you place the watch, uh, on this microphone over here, and then it sends a signal into the, uh, machine itself and gives you some statistics. I'll show you guys, uh, that now. Uh, let me just put the, the phone over there for just a quick second. So, most typical way, you know, usually most people store their watches is um face up so i'm just gonna put this in the uh time grapher of course face up got the watch pretty much fully wound and uh we're going to get this uh turned on and i'm gonna show you guys the statistics So from what you guys can, you know, obviously tell, um, certainly is, looks to be performing, uh, within, well within COSC standards at minus four plus six. Looks like it's pretty much perfect with, uh, timekeeping, uh, dial side up, very he healthy amplitude at, uh, around 311 degrees, no beat error. Um, and the, uh, beat rate as you guys can see, is 28,800 vibrations per hour. So it's actually uh, kind of cool, uh, which is great. And as you guys can see, there was literally uh, no gain and no loss, uh, dead even at um, about a rate of zero seconds per day. So that's with the uh, dial-up, kind of cool. And we are back to the uh, original... Uh, oops. Sorry about that, guys. Get the camera reset there. So we're back to the original uh, spot. And uh, so you guys can see, you know, there's some pretty cool uh, things with this watch, of course. Um, the uh, loom is, is very good. The in-house caliber movement is pretty much fantastic. Keeping time at, you know, pretty much excellent. Uh, although the little disclaimer with that is that the, um, you know, depending on the time of day, depending on the position, temperature, a whole bunch of other factors... Watches may either gain or lose time. Um, but an instantaneous uh, day jump at midnight, which is great, of course, too. Um, a few things I'm not really crazy about is the uh, 60 uh, click bezel and not the uh, 120, which is actually really, really nice. Um, and then also really not having any uh, half links uh, in the watch kind of sucks for micro adjustment. And, 
you know, the fact that there's only uh, three uh, slots for micro adjustment just can make it a little hard. Um, so that's, you know, a couple of things that I would say aren't uh, so, so great. And, uh, you know, again, you guys don't see the uh, movement, but you guys saw it on the uh, website before. So, you know, very, very, very accurate movement. And, of course, uh, you know, the kind of uh, crown that's slightly oversized, uh, but very, very, very easy to operate. Um, you know, overall, I would say this watch is, you know, pretty, pretty good. Um, you know, for, for the money, it could be done, you know, quite a bit better. Although I know Tudor um, has gotten quite a big following over the last few years, uh, especially their Black Bay 58 um, has kind of gone off the roof and is on back order now for months upon months. It's very hard to find it. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys really enjoyed my unboxing, uh, my review. Um, did want to just show you guys one more quick thing, as I said I would. Um, again, this is a 20 millimeter uh, band. Um, so there's a little bit of space there. So it appears to be around a 22 millimeter lug width. Um, the reason why I do always bring that up, by the way, is because there are some people that do like to change up their bands. They like to put, uh, you know, sometimes rubber, steel, NATO, whatever it is, leather, you know, you have it. Um, so, you know, the watch could be, you know, easily, all you have to do is take out the um, spring pins, of course, using a uh, spring bar removal tool, pop those right out, and put a new band right on, and then uh, you're ready to move and groove wherever you want. But anyways, I hope you guys really enjoyed uh, this unboxing and review. Uh, please do not forget to like and subscribe. It really helps uh, the channel, and you'll be the first to get the uh, new content from me, although I know it's been a little while. Um, but I got some uh, surprises coming for you guys next, so don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave some comments below, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode.